Hello, welcome to another episode of Driftless Area Outdoors. Today, we're gonna do the right thing and take a 1984 Goldwing and a 1996 Intruder, pack them up with a whole bunch of stuff we probably don't need, and drive across the state to go camping. Stay tuned, so it'd be a good one. We're going to do the right thing. And we ain't going to check the oil or the air in the tires. We're just going to send it. You know, probably going to be a disaster. Well, when I said it was going to go bad, it didn't take long. We were out of town about a mile. Tony went off the road. Bike in the ditch. Tire locked up. You can see up there where he skidded off the road. All the way down to the fence, and his gold wing lays in the pasture. Rough weekend. Well, stay tuned, we'll get back to you. You see things like rough grooved surface, bump, loose gravel. It's just what you're looking for when you're out on a bike ride. I'm telling you, this road will spill you quick if you ain't careful. So we wait our turn, but we're going pretty slow. See you when we get to camp. Stay tuned. Well, we made it, guys. We're here in Shellsburg, Wisconsin. Uh, right now, I am at the uh, Shellsburg Area Veterans Memorial. And uh, we're gonna come and check this out. In just a few minutes. But what I really wanna see is right back here is actually the mine. Uh, Shellsburg's known to uh, really it kicked off the lead mining in the state of Wisconsin and uh, you're gonna find out some pretty interesting things let's go down and 
take a little wander around inside the museum. We're not going to take the full tour. I'm just going to show you some of the tools and some of the things that uh, they've got to offer. Come on along. All right, here we are inside the museum. Um, see some of the age things. Yeah, we got a mine here, holding hopper, skip cars, and kind of a model of how it all worked out. Some of the crude tools they actually used. That right there is the actual this building, or by this building, and uh, where the mine is. So one of the reasons they call us Wisconsin Badgers is because the, in the mining days, they used to just burrow into the hillside and live in these little burrows into the hillside. And they look kind of like this. Or they just literally burrowed into the hillside like a badger. So the nickname stuck and we've been Wisconsin Badgers pretty much every since. Uh, here you've got the church um, still standing still in use and these are the shell which we will go and I'll show you their house. Uh, remarkable place because of Tony's wreck today we got here a little late so I wanted to get here first and um, really show you some of these tools and um, you can see what they're written on, you know, what, what they all are, hay forks and, and hay rakes and corn knife and this planter. I'll have you know I've been on the business end of one of them putting in the garden, potato planter like that. And we uh, planted our potatoes. Here's the Shellsburg branch. Right here gets this little thrashing picture. Pretty cool. You see them out there thrashing right along the Pecatonica River. And we got some old saws and some of the tools they used. remember my grandpa's shop there was a lot of these tools handed down to my father and we cleaned them out when he passed away and uh, license plate collection the old Brewster Hotel see a lot of interesting stuff if you get a chance to get out here in the Shellsburg area you're going to want to check this out. A little picture of the downtown. We're going to be down there later. Seeing if they got any wobble pops. Maybe talk them out of a cheeseburger. We'll see. Hey, look at that. Wheelchair, buggies, sleigh, a lot of snow. Still in Wisconsin. The old runner sleds. One looks brand new. Mannequins. Come on. Come here and get a date with them. You gotta know. I'll have you know I've handed over money and seen it go into a cash register just like that when I was a kid. Not that I'm dating myself, but a lot of cool stuff to see. They had a hard go of it back then these guys doing their mining and, and, and loom I know an old witch that used to have one of them and uh, look at that entertainment lots of entertainment that they did over the years like the circus was even town 
Look at that, kiddos at the pool. We got a remarkable pool here. It's uh, pretty cool. So here's a butter churn, a couple of sausage makers, bread maker, mop bucket, stove top. What do you think you got it rough this morning, fellers? Well, let's do. Open up your General Electric refrigerator. This is what they were using. And they didn't have that for a long time. Here's the train in town. The depot's still there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. So here's how we lowered buckets down and then they picked up the lead, put it in the bucket, brought it up out of the mine. And they literally were just down there burrowing in this mine with these tools and you know with these drill bits and hammers and chipping this stuff out and we would get a clump of it and the Indians used to trade this stuff to these people and then once they found out where they were getting it from they burrowed into the side of the hill and started getting it themselves cut the Indians out Blackhawk and a few of the others got a little pissed Started a war. Didn't end well for him. Okay, guys. We just kind of whip around real quick. Show you the museum. I wanted to get down here with my bro. Obviously, he couldn't make it. But, um, well, we did. And uh, we're good. So, I think for now, I'm going to go out and uh, I'll read you some of the history that they talk about on the sign and then we'll uh, go up and visit the Veterans Memorial and uh, see what's going on there. Stick with me. There's more to come. All right, this is historical Badger Park. Badger Park, like our Badger State, took off its name from the area where the miners, little badgers, dug in for the winter while others, called suckers, moved on south which includes eight and a half acres of what consisted valuable land due to the lead deposits found in 1838 and 1839. When 50 square feet of ground with rights to mine were bought for $250, it was east of Badger Hill where Jesse W. Shull, and we just went and seen his house, founder of Shellsburg, built his home about 1818 west boundary of the park now known as scales mound road was once the galena wagon road general grant traveled it and watered his horse at the bull pump built by the beacon garrett who started mining in the very spot now occupied by badger park the bull pump probably the first water pump in the territory for controlling water in the mine shafts was powered by a bull. This raised the water from the mine. In 1934, during Dr. Henry F. Hosley's term as mayor, the city council bought the land for Badger Park. It was a WPA project approved by the United States government, started September 1935 and completed without costing the taxpayers one extra cent in taxes. The shelter houses and bathhouse are of native stone and built to stand. So my question to you, you think they could, our government could build this today without it costing the taxpayers one extra cent in taxes? Not on your life. But anyway, that's a little bit about Badger Park and the Mining Museum. All right, everybody. This is Mr. Shell's house. This is the founder of Shellsburg. Uh, this is where he lived. This is where he settled. It's just a, on the edge of town. Um, look at all those chimneys. That's what it took to keep that old girl warm. And uh, I bet you once that rock got warm, it probably stayed pretty warm. But it's a beautiful place. Um, obviously, uh, 
different people live here now, so we're going to respect their privacy and not go bother them. But I figured I could stay up here and film this, and you get an idea that this house was built before Wisconsin was a state, and Wisconsin became a state in 1836. So it's been here a while, and along with some of the other buildings that I'll try to get some pictures of at least, if not some video, um, they've been up since... Uh, since Christ was in short pants and uh, these badgers, they, they built them right. All right, stay tuned, guys. Well, guys, we're back up here on top of the hill. I got to tell you, the shade and the breeze is feeling good. It's a little warm. Gonna be a warm evening for camping, for sure. But uh, we're up here at the Veterans Memorial and uh, we'll get you in here so you can see those have served at other times from the area but you got the Vietnam conflict and Gulf War conflict beautiful flag along with the Army and Air Force and Marine flags. Coast Guard. World War II, World War I. It's really not a bad place to sit and reflect. As luck would have it. We got just a little bit of time to do that. So as a vet, and uh, is something that should be uh, talked about is PTSD. Anybody that knows me know I support, and I wear a lot of T-shirts and stuff from Till Valhalla. Till Valhalla, until we meet again. Uh, it's what we say to our brothers and sisters that we lose in combat till Valhalla. Uh, those of us that have, um, will hold that in a special place. But um, you see the back of my trucks, my pickups, uh, big till Valhalla decal. I'll. Uh, Maybe post a picture of it up here. My other one, it's got 22 a day on the back of it. And what 22 a day is 22 veterans a day that we lose to suicide. And uh, Til Valhalla is trying to get them to just have awareness that uh, there's 22 vets out there a day doing this. And um, we're going to do 22 a day until none. We're just going to try to eliminate um, that situation. So when you see all that, that's that's what it means. Till Valhalla, till we meet again. So one of the next things I want to do is I need to throw some shout outs for the people that's helped me um, fight off my demons. Uh, and those people, um, some of them have ideas, some of them don't, uh, just how much it means to me, how much they mean to me. But, um, my family, first and foremost, uh, the support I've gotten from them, um, I've had some pretty rough times last year, and, uh, they've been beside me regardless I appreciate that you know my best friend was supposed to be on this ride with me today wrecked his bike um, he's recuperating uh, scratched up skinned up gonna be sore tomorrow um, he's helped me a lot his wife Susan's helped me a lot um, 
these, these friends, you, 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 don't, you can't replace them, folks, you know. Um, somebody I've reunited with after years that, that uh, realistically should have hit me with a club. Didn't. Forgave me. Um, you know, thanks a lot, Deb. Uh, but I got one special friend I really need to throw a shout out to, and that's Amanda. You have no idea where I was at when you reached out to me, where I was, had my head and where I was thinking of going. And I don't know why you reached out after all these years, but I'm so thankful you did. Amanda. Well, the GoPro got a little too hot and uh, it's been on the bike, sun beating on it all day. Jeez, imagine that. So I'm just gonna finish this part up by saying to all my friends, my family, my beautiful wife, everybody that's helped me, thanks. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, I'm blessed. Let's go camp. All right, first thing I got is a new chair. Um, this chair, I bought this with my own money. Nobody's sponsoring this. But it's a Moonlands. Moonlands chair. You can see how small it packs up, goes right in my bag. You see there's instructions, that's probably a good thing. Set this stuff down for now. Well, what, well, what do you, what, well, I'll help me understand what the devil is, well, okay. All right, I'll we'll set that down. Yeah, that looks like it'll hold. Old fat bastard like me, just fine. Not. All right. Well, looks like we're gonna go in here with this one. We're gonna go over here with this one. We're gonna. Get these corners. Yeah, that's there's nothing to it. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, get up in there. Yeah, get, get, yeah, here, yeah. High up in there. Yeah, see, it's like that. Camp chair. Yeah. This, this is about as good a place to fall down as any. I'll be dipped. Holds me right up. Little wobbly. Add some wobble pops. Might work out all right. All right. Huh? Next, I'm gonna get the tent out and try to set that up. But so far, the old Moonlands chair. Yeah, I like it. Easy to set up. Easy to store. Easy to pack on a bike. Still got a place to sit down without dragging the picnic table over. Yeah, it's gonna work. Okay, so the next thing I have is this tent. Year top tent. Um, this is all of it is. Uh, some of the people that, if you follow Steve Walls, um, he used one of these. I see how easy it was for him to pack it in and, and use it and I thought, being that I, I'm going to try to do more stuff on the bike, uh, it might be a, a tent to try out. Uh, if you're interested, I think that chair was at $30 range. This tent, um, I'm going to set you back about a C note, about a hundred bucks. Uh, but it, it's really something with a rain top and everything you can use 
for three seasons, so they say. And uh, I guess we're going to find out, right? Lay this out. We'll get her staked up. All right. Well, let me get this up and I'll, I'll show you and tell you how hard it was once I do that because it might take some figuring out the first time. Stay tuned. All right, so here's the little tent all set up and the chair. Um, it was pretty simple to set up. This loop right here, I forgot to run the pull through that. I didn't see that till I tried to set it up. So I had to take the pull back out, no big deal. Then the end, um, you got the little pole and then basically you just take that flap and stake it down. It gave me a lot of stakes. Uh, there's not a lot of places to put them. So it'll open up on the side. I'll put my bag and stuff in there later. Um, not unpacking the bike any more than I have to. Um, but at this point, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna ride up and get some wood. Uh, we do have a fire pit. I do have a little bit of wood in there. I think we'll start a fire, but uh, maybe a little later. It's pretty warm. So I'm just going to sneak up on the road and see if I can't get a bundle of wood or two and get them back down here. And uh, we'll get a fire going, and I think I'm going to go find some something to eat. So stay tuned. Um, we'll see how the sleeping bag and all that's going to fit in here once... It gets time for that, so stick with us. Well, all right, guys, we're in bed. So note to self, um, the tent's great, but here's the thing. It's got a rain fly. And when it's really hot and humid like this, I recommend putting it on when you um, set the tent up in the daylight because... Um, all the moisture at night when the dew comes out and all that if you don't have it out and I'll show you this is all screen and it's all open right now because I kind of wanted it that way but it allows the moisture to come in so it's a double edged sword so hindsight being 2020 I put the rain fly on and before I went to bed, if I wanted that breeze to come through, which is what it's doing now, and the and the dew is already set, then I'd take the rain fly off and go to bed. Um, I think it's going to be all right. It's going to work. Well, I'll see you guys in the morning. And uh, never did have a fire. Bought wood. Had a, a really good guy come down and bring it down here from the store. Uh, we must have talked for 25 minutes, but just it was hot and sticky, and the last thing I wanted to do was have a fire. So uh, I forgoed that. Um, this is nice. It's got lots of zippers. Uh, get in and out um, for a bike overnighter. Gonna work. I mean, you don't want to be in this and go uptown and bring a fat girl home. Uh, by no means but hey it's gonna work for a guy all right we'll see you in the morning ah good morning everyone so you can see i got everything packed up uh, i never did have a fire last night and uh i just gave away the wood to my neighbor over there but i got everything packed back up uh the tent went back in the bag pretty easy. The um, chair went back in the bag pretty easy. I slept fairly decent. The tent, plenty of room for one person to sleep in. Uh, I didn't have that rain fly on for it. that reason that I could get this breeze going through there. And it, it kept me cool all night. Damp. I mean, it's really humid. But um, I've got to announce races up north. So... I'm gonna make my way back home and jump in my old motor home and head up north so I can announce the races. But I'm gonna close this out. Thank everyone for coming along. 
I do want to shout out one more time to all my friends and uh, family that's that's helped me through hard times and uh, maybe someday I'll repay the favor but uh, for now thanks for coming along at Driftless Area Outdoors and um, we'll see you again real soon we appreciate each and every one of you thanks <laughs>